Hey everybody, Pat here in the Cardboard Dungeon, and today I'm looking at Sabine's TIE Fighter expansion for X-Wing. This of course comes from the Star Wars Rebels TV show. This is an Imperial TIE Fighter that was captured, repainted by Sabine Wren, and they used it to fly a reconnaissance mission and sneak aboard kind of an Imperial ship and do some damage. So very thematic, it's interesting, this is a Rebel ship. So we have a TIE Fighter with all the same actions, basic upgrade stat line maneuvers as Imperial TIE Fighters now in the hands of the Rebels. And of course this TIE Fighter to distinguish it as Sabine's has a very distinct paint job, orange and yellow on the insides of its panels as well as around the cockpit. Very neat looking paint job. I like this ship a lot. I was excited about it. I don't think it's the best ship out of wave 10 but i think it brings some interesting options to the rebels so let's jump in looking at the maneuver dial this is a tie fighter of course same exact maneuver dial as the imperial tie fighters that we've seen since the very beginning of x-wing highly maneuverable very speedy what you would expect from this ship on the stat line attack value of two three agility three hull and no shields over on the action bar we have focus barrel roll and evade. TIE Fighters have an empty upgrade bar. A couple of these can take elite upgrades of course and we're going to see a way that this particular TIE Fighter can pack even more upgrades into it when we get to the title. But first we're going to look at the pilots starting with Ahsoka Tano in addition to X-Wing I was very excited about. Now to be honest I thought we would see Ahsoka as a crew not as a pilot and especially not as a pilot for this ship. I don't recall that she ever flew this TIE Fighter in the show. I might be wrong, but I'm just happy to have Ahsoka in the game. I've been a fan since the middle to end of the Clone Wars when she really became a very cool character, and then, of course, in Rebels. So Ahsoka has a pilot skill of 7, 17 points. At the start of the combat phase, you may spend one focus token to choose a friendly ship at range 1. It may perform a free action. Pretty simple, nice supportability. Rebels, of course, big on giving actions away, supporting their wingmates. Ahsoka can take an elite upgrade as well. Next up, we've got Sabine Wren. We've seen her as a pilot before on the attack shuttle. She has the same ability, but first she's got a pilot skill of 5. She costs 15 points, can also take an elite upgrade. Immediately before you reveal your maneuver, you may perform a free boost or barrel roll action. Notable, of course, because TIE Fighters can't boost normally, so you can give it a boost action via Sabine's ability, and then you still get your regular action after executing your maneuver. It's always been a good ability for Sabine. Liked it on the attack shuttle, love it on the TIE Fighter. Okay, next up we have Captain Rex, pilot skill of 4, 14 points. After you perform an attack, assign the Suppressive Fire Condition card to the Defender. So we have to talk real quick about conditions. This is a new thing with Wave 10, a new type of card. They come with a token. This particular one, Suppressive Fire, says, when attacking a ship other than Captain Rex, roll one fewer attack die. When you declare an attack targeting Captain Rex or when Captain Rex is destroyed, remove this card. At the end of the combat phase, if Captain Rex did not perform an attack, this phase, remove this card. Okay, so my initial impression of conditions, just to put this out there, is I'm not terribly fond of them. This is adding another thing to the game, another bit of accounting, bookkeeping you have to keep track of. There's new tokens now. Each one of these has its own token you have to keep track of. And it's just another layer that is muddling the simplicity that I love about X-Wing. Now, that's not to say that I don't think there are some good ideas here. I like the thematic idea of suppressive fire. Rex is dogging an opposing ship so badly that if it tries to attack somebody else, it has to roll less dice. It's a neat ability. It'll be interesting to see where they go with this, but I'm not, I already have too much X-Wing clutter that I'm constantly trying to organize as it is now trying to keep track of these extra things. Maybe my mind will be changed as we see more of these. There's a few more to look at in Wave 10, the ships that have just come out. Um, but for what it is, it's an interesting ability. I think it's it, it adds more things to keep track of, which I think X-Wing, especially over the last few expansion waves, 
has added a lot of stuff to the game, a lot of things to keep track of um, that I'm not terribly fond of. I don't want to see the game become super, super complex. I like X-Wing as a pick-up-and-play, you know, uh, keep-things-simple type of a game, and I realize that it's, it's moving away from that, and that's the way these games go. This is Wave 10, after all. The game's been around for years now. Um, but anyways, that's Captain Rex. Finally, last pilot. All these pilots are unique, so no generic Rebel TIE Swarms are going to be possible. We have Zeb Aurelios coming in at a pilot skill of 3, 13 points. He has the same ability we've seen, I believe, on the attack shuttle. When defending, you may cancel critical results before normal hit results. Not a bad ability. He's inexpensive for what he is. If you really want to put a TIE Fighter, you have some leftover points. He's only one point more than the Academy pilot for the Imperials, and he's got a higher pilot skill. Uh, and, of course, he can take this the, the title we're going to see coming up. So without further ado, let's jump into the upgrade card, starting with the old favorite Veteran Instincts. We get a copy of this in here. Increase your pilot skill by two. It's an elite upgrade for one point. Love this one. Very popular, useful everywhere on all three factions. We see it all the time. No surprise that it's here. It lets you bump Ahsoka up to a nine, which is pretty cool, and that's going to come in handy with one of the cards we're going to see here in a moment. All right, next up we have a new unique crew. It is Captain Rex. Two points. Rebel only, of course. After you perform an attack that does not hit, you may assign one focus token to your ship. A very cool, uh, good if you're going to put him on a ship with a gunner or a TLT, anything that shoots a couple times so you can have a focus for the second attack. I think that's going to be very useful. It'll be interesting to see where he pops up. He's inexpensive at two points. Like it. Next, we have an illicit upgrade. It is unique. EMP device, two points. During the combat phase, instead of performing any attacks, you may discard this card to assign two ion tokens to each ship at range one. So one shot use, two ion tokens, of course, puts the ion effect on large ships as well as small ships. Fly it in to a group of enemy ships. Use it instead of attacking. Ionize all of them to set them up for the next round. Pretty cool. Why is it here in this expansion on a ship that has no illicit slots? We're going to find out here real shortly. But first, let's look at this captured TIE. This is a modification. One point. TIE fighter only. Rebel only. Enemy ships with a pilot skill value lower than yours cannot declare you as the target of an attack. After you perform an attack, or when you are the only remaining friendly ship in play, discard this card. So basically what this is saying is that if you have a higher pilot skill, and you have this modification, and you haven't made any attacks, enemy ships with lower pilot skills cannot shoot at you. Basically you are tricking them to thinking that you're an Imperial TIE Fighter, don't shoot at me, I'm just flying around not doing anything. Now, of course, this uh, is going to tie in nicely with Ahsoka and Veteran Instincts to get her up to a 9. It's going to mean she's going to be able to be fired upon only by aces with the high pilot skills of 9 or more. Also makes that EMP device we just saw pretty slick. You can fly in unattacked, pop that off, fly away. That's not an attack. Well, you know what else is not attacks? Bombs. So if you have a bomb on the ship, and I know TIE Fighters can't carry bombs, but yes they can, we're going to see in a minute a way to do that. Bombs are not making an attack, so you can drop a bomb, doesn't break this card. It'll be neat to see if this goes anywhere. I don't think it's going to make a huge splash, but I can see lots of neat uh, synergy with this ship. Especially in you, we're getting closer to having Rebels only squads, the Ghost with Sabine's TIE Fighter, I think will be interesting. So... We'll see what happens with that. It's an interesting card. One point, fun to play around with. Now, finally, the big one for this. This is a title. One point, Sabine's Masterpiece. TIE Fighter only, Rebel only. So only on this ship currently. Your upgrade bar gains the crew and illicit upgrade icons. So that's insane right there. Now we've got a TIE Fighter that the Rebels can fly, and it can take a crew, and it can take an illicit. So it has access to both of those upgrade types there's a ton of crew in the game I and mean, it's going to take a while just to go through and see what the the best options you have are for that and of course illicit another big one as well uh, so very interesting nice options for this ship 
definitely makes it sort of stand out. Um, I was talking about bombs a minute ago. Of course, you could put Sabine Crew on this. Give it a bomb icon as well. Let it drop a bomb and have the bomb do more damage. Oh, interesting to see. That's Sabine's TIE Fighter expansion pack. Uh, very neat. Lots of cool stuff here. All right, guys, as always, I'll see you next time. Bye.